Wow. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much from the bottom of my heart for all of you being here this evening and for giving us the strength and the support to, to get through this and to get through a lot more that we're going to be experiencing. Um, I'll tell you a little story that happened when we were over here earlier in the week trying to determine what we were going to get for a little memorial and a register board. And we looked at a bunch of different ones and we had them laid out there and my brother Bill says, you know, he said, I like the dove. And he said, that represents the, the free spirit of, of Jason. And that kind of reminded me of a, a book that I've read in times where I had a need to, to read something that would give me some strength to, to go through it. And that book is called uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. So Bill and I, we went out to the store to buy the book. And they handed me the book and I just opened it up just open it up. I don't know at this point if Jason was guiding me, but I have a strange feeling he was. And this is how it started out, this page. So this is heaven, he thought, and he had to smile at himself. It was hardly very respectful to analyze heaven in the very moment that one flies up to enter it. It felt like a seagull body, but already it flew far better than his old one had ever flown. Why, with half the effort, he thought, I'll get twice the speed, twice the performance of my best days on earth. I think he guided me there, and I really do. And again, I just want to say thank you all very, very much for coming. This has been very difficult on this family. Um, like I said, we'll have some more difficult days, but with the friends that Jason has, with the friends that we all have here and the hearts, we're, gonna, we're all going to make it through. We all make it through. Jason was a very free-spirited individual, and he had a zest for life and an intensity for living it to its fullest. He was wild, God, was he wild. Carefree, fun-loving. I can't wait to sit down with his friends and hear some of their stories. I'm sure my hair will stand up on end if I have any left. <laughs> he opened up his pocketbook, or excuse me, he opened up his door and his pocketbook like he opened up his heart to any and all who needed a place to live, something to eat, or just plain have fun. Jason showed at an early age the caring, loving, and sensitivity that he had. He carried those attributes into his manhood by being a devoted and dedicated father to his son and my grandson, Isaiah. His friends had told me that he often talked about his dad's cooking. Could have used a few more pounds, though. A few years ago, we, we looked at a number of bar and grills and trying to find one to purchase. We were excited about the idea and the thought of working together. And one day he said to me, quote, unquote, Dad, you can take care of the cooking and running the business while I'll take care of the pool leagues, dart leagues, baseball and football boards, and the book. <laughs> what a kid. My goal now in life is, is to get that place. So if any one of our, out, well, there we go. So if any one of you out there have some deep pockets, I know there's some revenue agents in here that can show us some ways we can put this money together and get the place. In looking for a place to buy when I was with Jay and afterwards I kept looking, I, I never had a name for it. I do now and it will be called Jay's Place. 
The family will cherish the memories of the cookouts, birthday parties, and get-togethers that we had with Jason. I'll cherish the numerous card games and other games like Monopoly, and I heard he played Monopoly quite a bit, pool and darts, and in darts he'd leave me in the dust with his uncanny ability to hit the bullseyes. I swear to gosh, I could never beat him. There are many camping trips we went on, and we sat around the campfire and playing ship's captain crew. Just don't ask me how much he took me for. The many trout fishing trips that we took and the passion we shared for it. Jason loved the green and gold of the Green Bay Packers and the many games we watched and the parties we had. His passion and love for the royal blue and the bright red of some team from Chicago, whose name I won't say, brought about many arguments, as you can tell, about that team. I can see my son now. I can see Jason. And we can all picture him sipping up in that big fishing hole surrounded by his loved ones. They're watching and waiting for him to pull in that trophy trout. He's smiling and laughing because on the top of his head, he's wearing this darn baseball hat with a big letter C on it, representing some team from Chicago, and he's trying to get my goat. What a kid. Well, may the good Lord have mercy on me, because I'd never thought I'd see the day that I'd ever change hats. I never thought I'd see the day I would change hats and wear the royal blue and the bright red of that team, the Chicago Cubs. Well, Jason, you've got the last laugh, and we're going to see it that the Cubbies win a World Series real soon. By God, we've got to start praying for the Cubbies. Thank you all. <laughs>